We probably okay. look weird anyways. So I know I look yeah. weird. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I mean, for what our show is, we're pretty normal looking guys for huh. the the genre of show. Like we're three guys with beards. I think we'll be okay. Bearded like, white dudes. Yeah, I think that yep. tracks. <laughs> Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Jason. This is our show about anything and everything off road. Ross made me laugh because he took a drink as soon as I started the intro. Gotta get <laughs> you got that it. seltzer. You did that fast, dude. Yep. You got it down quick. Yeah, it's my third <laughs> seltzer of the day. I, I know the uh, the Woo. time frame here for a sip. Yep. So as always, socially distanced. It's the only way we can do the show. I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast, and we're back in Arkansas tonight. We're we're a couple oh, of, like back Jason's? to back. I'm actually um, South Central Missouri. Sorry. Are you really? Yeah, South Central Missouri, West Plains. West Plains. See, I knew I was close. But more importantly, you're perched in front of a, of a Land Cruiser, which is consistent with yes. this show's yeah. mantra. Start so to finish. Is there any other vehicle but a Land Cruiser is what I got to ask. I don't think there I, is. I'm I'm already loving the way the show's going to go the rest of the dude, night. <laughs> dude, you know, occasionally it comes up where it's like, where the the not mantra but the trajectory and and like home for our show is, and it always comes back to Toyota four by fours. <laughs> you know, Chris, you've had a bunch. Yeah. I've had a bunch, and our guests yeah. predominantly, I'd say probably fifty to seventy five percent of our guests have have had or uh, currently operate in the Toyota 4x4 land. So, yeah. Welcome, Jason. Yeah. Glad You're to be here. People. So, speaking of Toyota 4x4s, do you want to talk about the English sports coupe that you had for a while? <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a segue right there. Um, yeah, things that have absolutely nothing to do with toyota 4 by 4s i had a week with the jaguar f type r convertible roadster whatever they call it these days um i want to preface preface this by saying i don't think i put more than 25 miles on it in the week that i had it um what we talked about last show the tundra trd pro that i put 707 miles on was uh here at the (laughs) same time Yes, okay. it was here at the same time as the Jaguar, so I, I barely drove the Jaguar. Um, and also, there was a tropical storm. So, uh, the you know, the Thursday and the Monday that I was actually here with the Jaguar in my presence, I was like, you know, there's trees down and power lines on the road. Maybe I shouldn't drive the high-performance, you know, convertible. Um, but that said... I did put a few miles on it and in a vacuum. So before we discuss the, with the world of vacuums, it is probably the prettiest car on sale today. (laughs) I don't, do either of you disagree? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a better looking vehicle on sale and the update arguably made it worse looking but since this car came to market i think it's the best vehicle the best not the best vehicle the best looking vehicle in production since the turn of the century like it's i i don't think my suggestion will top it but it's like close and i'm trying to get the correct color one that i want okay um hit me also nice shirt i almost bought some eddie bauer hiking boots the other day (laughs) so i buy their shirts all the time because they're the only thing that consistently comes in large tall uh i can't get the image i want i like the lc 500 better but that's just me I like it in green. The yeah, the else in Nori green. The LC LC five hundred is more dramatic. I think in twenty years the LC five hundred people are going to go. There were some risks as they probably couldn't have taken, and it would have been fine. But the F type 
the same way that the E-type will forever be perfectly pretty. I think the F-type is perfectly pretty. Um, it yeah. drives great. It, it makes a fucking hell of a noise. It makes good noises. It makes it makes a lot of noise. It's fucking loud. Um, but it, it just kind of feels old. It's 2023. I think it's been on sale now with like a largely not updated drivetrain and interior and whatnot other than the facelift and minor updates that came with it um when did it, it started what 2015 14 keep going i don't want to say it's like 12 or yeah i want to say it's like 12 or 13 because Hold that's on. back when i was still doing like here's other cars that i drove blogs and like and videos myself like i know like i have a youtube video with an f-type that a dealership like gave me 40 so minutes thank you with. wikipedia yeah 2013 so model yeah. years 2014 to present so it's been on sale effectively 12, 12 10 years um and it given the this one was a hundred and nineteen thousand dollars okay which is it's a big number you know it's not a small like there's a bunch of other shit you can get for 100 to 140 um, but I think the Jag is probably better looking than all of them and arguably better sounding. So it's still so 23 LC 500s are 106 to 114. So like, that's right yeah. there. Like that makes sense for luxury coupes. Like it's, it's still yeah. shocking to me that we're talking six figures for a car that will see for you, two people. The LC500 has a little bitch seat. Depreciate. Like kind of will get to. Yeah. And it'll depreciate 35% over the first one and a half, two years that it's off the lot. Um, but no, I think the F Type is, is a better driver's car than the LC500. I'd probably take the LC500. It's The LC500 is lives in a different planet. Like, I think we can all you know yeah. resonate with that but also 120 grand is like almost touching c806 money it's it's 911 carrera s money it's 718 you know uh not gt4 but uh gts 4.0 money so it's like a, since the F type came in is it, that's a really tricky price point, and I think emotion is a an increasing factor, not just here but also in in trucks. Not to you know deliberately like comically tie things in, but you cut the price in half and you have fifty or sixty grand to spend, and whether you you know, you buy a forerunner or a upcoming, uh, you know, GX 550 or a LC 250. Like so much of it is just preference and emotion and psychological investment. Not so much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. What, what the numbers come to. Right. So that's the Jags' biggest selling point. It is. Fun to do the skinny pedal. No, not even that. 75% of it is just like you park it in the driveway, you walk away from it, and you're like, holy shit, this is <laughs> yeah, just timelessly look at pretty. You know? Yeah. Not like a CA Corvette, which is faster than anything you'll drive past in any given day, but is heinous. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I dropped off <laughs> some lunch stuff to Sarah today at her job, and there's a white uh white one in the parking lot and it had the the roadster top removed and from just the profile i was like i don't like it yeah like i'm i know why they went mid-engine i appreciate it it's just not my aesthetic that's what happens when you spend all of your development dollars on speed and none of them yeah. on actually making it look like something that will age better than you know an instagram reel so the other thing you drove, I looked up the starting price on it. Oh, what did I? 
Hold on. What is it? I want to know, I want to know what your window sticker says on the other thing because it's the Alpine B oh, the, XB7. Okay. Yeah, so we'll we'll talk about this quickly. Um, perfect comparison here because I just spent a week with the Mercedes GLS 63, which is the right. big three row AMG Mercedes. Uh, so I just spent another week with the not BMW, not to be confused, the Alpina. XB7, which had a starting price of $145,000 and an as-tested price. And looking at my spreadsheet, uh, because I'm a not a Camisa-level lunatic, but like a, a, a medium-level lunatic, um, my spreadsheet says the as-tested price of $150,000, $245,000, which is... Eight thousand six hundred and five dollars less than the GLS we talked about a couple weeks ago or last week. Oh, I thought you were going to say my first home price. Oh no, God, that's more than <laughs> it's only I'm like down. twelve grand less than no, the first I house I ever bought. <laughs> I yeah, but you're you have the privilege of 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 rural America. I live in the in the New York tri-state right. area, and I should just. They were available myself. at that price for you about 150 years ago. Uh, yeah, I think the last president that was, this would be a really fun game. So, so this BMW was 150 grand. When was the last time my house, this property area, was worth that? Under whose presidency? I don't know how far Zillow goes back. <laughs> it, 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 I promise you, it doesn't go up. There was no. In Arkansas, Missouri, all my life. So, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Forever ago, <laughs> Jason's back like, in the seventeen hundred. We're still at yeah. that price here. Yeah. Uh, well, not let's let's not increase my anxiety. My my <laughs> my, my, my angst. Uh, yeah, home. Anyways, we're not gonna go there. So yeah, so the Alpina XB seven. Um, it is basically the CEO of Alpina basically said that these cars and the company's reason for existence is to have Autobahn missiles. Like they're not trying to make M5 or, you know, N3, M4 competitors. They're trying to make stuff that is like soft suspension, but huge power. So you can like highway cruise at top speed on the Autobahn. And it is the XB7 is one of the few vehicles that I've ever spent time with that both my friends and family that have been in the presence of it actually are like, holy shit, this thing looks amazing. Like the paint is gorgeous. The wheels, Alpina, they make the best wheels in the world right now. Um, And the car just has like a presence, you know, like this is an off road show. It's stupid that the thing has like 325 profile tires on 23s. It's not. I had to park it on a grass patch in a park in New Canaan over the weekend. Like you have to understand this is like bougie, like tennis courts. And like, you know, there's a a you parked on the polo grounds. Pretty much, there's a, there's tennis courts and a pond and food stands with seventeen dollar burgers, and I had to park this thing on the grass, and I had to put it in like off road, like high mode, but it that's not the reason <laughs> for it, you know. It, it just no, it's I just I love it. I think what it, it, what does the fuel economy look like? I haven't checked. I'm I'm just thinking about like if they made it to blast on the Autobahn for long distances. Like, what yeah. are, are we stopping every 200 miles to get gas? No, like, no, 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 no. In 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 eighth gear, um, at like highway speed, it's doing like 1100 RPM. Like, it's one of those okay. things where they just figured it out. You know, the same thing with Is the, the M5. Eight speed. Oh, uh, that's a great question. I would assume 
So, please hold. We are, we are checking, and this is where we make the Ferrari jokes. Uh, yes, we are checking. Uh, yes, please box. Uh, well, it doesn't say. Thanks, Wikipedia. It says eight speed. Yeah. I got to do a deeper search to pull that one out, I think. It just, <laughs> Wikipedia just says eight speed automatic. Yeah, that's not. Awesome. So, not yeah, good so that's. You know, I, I feel like I have one more thing to mention. Uh, oh, the, the Polaris. So we just talked about uh, my trip to New Hampshire. Yeah. And the box that I, the cargo box that I put on the back of the Scrambler XP 1000S. Um, this would be the third machine that I repurposed it on. And as it turns out, yellow duct tape from Amazon does not make it waterproof. Hmm. Oh, did you wrap it on the outside? No, the holes that I drilled through it to, yep, that box. The holes that, yeah, well, yeah, those those two. <laughs> there were holes through that yellow duct tape for mounting it on a different thing. But there's also holes through the base of it that I used the same yellow Amazon duct tape for to try to keep water out. Um, because, you know, when you're on a budget, getting actual duct tape is eight or nine dollars at home depot and getting the yellow cheapo duct tape on amazon is 3.99 so uh, all uh, i can think is like jb mm -hmm. weld wasn't an option for some plastic epoxy type stuff. that's more expensive than the 3.99 duct tape on amazon so mm, yeah that's a valid point say, but it also would work yeah we went away uh it was two weekends ago that was uh, let's see, today is, we are recording on October 3rd. We are on, uh, September 22nd to 24th. And I opened the box today and found that everything inside of it was soaked. Damp. So, oh. no, not damp. Like it had been hosed down oh, with, a, with a pressure washer. Oh yep. Because not only did I, you know, subject it to all of the off-roading and and mud and spray and everything but i drove home through a tropical storm so uh yeah i was to say like yeah the other shot i have of it is is like the box is brown mm. yeah Pro probably not ideal mud conditions for you there <laughs> yeah it it's like concentrated where the duct tape is yeah exactly yeah. we don't see any yellow <laughs> The funny yep. thing is, at that point, it was still completely dry inside. But it turns what? out that the moose box from 2008 is not tropical storm proof. Who knew? Anyways, Chris, what is happening with you? I literally have no updates because all I do is go to youth sporting events. <laughs> oh. Which has been the, the theme of the show for me the last couple of weeks is like... Uh, I go to two high school football games a week, at least one third grade flag football game a week, plus practice. Um, and then the seventh graders had a couple uh, baseball tournaments. The last one was nice because it was a wood bat tournament. And so you didn't have to listen so to the good. ping off every aluminum kid's bat. It was like the crack of a bat. And then it was watching every kid go, oh, that's hit hard. Wait, no, it's not because it's off a wood bat. So they had so to readjust to that. So. Yeah, but no, I sent you pictures. It was nice. Uh, it was very early uh, for one game on Saturday morning. We had an 8 a.m. baseball game, which is just because, you know, so you had to there. be there. You had to be there for warm up. 7.15 was 7 the, yeah. the ask time. So we were leaving the house at six something because I yeah. wanted coffee. Uh, and I did an adult thing the night before and I went out, uh, with some friends to the go, go figure here in the Midwest. We had a barbecue competition the night before. So, Whoa. uh, yeah, I, I did not, what uh, was the rise? What was the what? meat vessel of choice for the barbecue? Uh, I only had access to ribs Friday night, but here's, 
Here's how well I ate. I made sure that I had barbecue again Saturday night because I didn't like the barbecue. I, I shouldn't say I didn't like it. It it was edible. To, like, it was good. Yeah, but it wasn't palate like cleanser. the pinnacle. Yeah, you had to have your palate yeah. cleanser. Jason's we have, like, we have a shit, we got here in, our barbecue. will smoke all of you. Yeah, we have a restaurant here in town called Joe's. It used to be Oklahoma Joe's. Now it's Joe's Kansas City Barbecue. It gets famous because like the first restaurant is in a gas station in the old part of town still. And that mm-hmm. location's still there, but they have satellite uh, locations in the suburbs now. And it's on, Bourdain put it on his list of like 10 places to eat before you die. It's a sandwich mm-hmm. with brisket, an onion ring, uh, cheese, sauce on a Kaiser roll, and then you get their fries and it's just I heavenly. I feel the meat sweats. No, 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 not meat sweats. It's very, it's very edible. Like it's, you don't feel horrible at the end. When I used to work for Toyota, uh, Kansas City, we're in the Kansas City region. So uh, all of the new car updates and, and all the, you know, re-up classes and stuff. I spent a lot of time in Kansas City. So <laughs> we go around to all the, all the barbecue places. I was friends with all the, the build techs. So they were in yeah. town. We'd go spend the evening, you know, at least one, one night there. And um, they'd take me around to all the barbecue places. And, which I'm, you know, I'm from Arkansas, just above Memphis. <laughs> so, you know, with the, was a big barbecue is a big deal down there so yeah but it's different it's different i i'll i'll still i'm a i'm a memphis style barbecue guy but i enjoy the style too yep it's so good my favorite part right now it's just because of the way the nfl works and because of taylor swift all these other people oh, are now oh, experience- yeah. that's and it's the only reference i'm making a night tour people are experiencing the city very differently right <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Just a shout out to the Jets and the Giants, who are both absolutely terrible. That that is a thing. We had to watch one, them last night. <laughs> one last thing on barbecue: if you're ever in Amarillo, Texas, uh, there's a there's a gas station there in Amarillo, Rudy. Uh, they got some awesome barbecue. <laughs> It's, I it's a good place. truly hope that my life trajectory takes me to Amarillo, Texas. It's so far away from you. <laughs> it's, it's half, the, literally half the country away. Also, we had a barbecue place when we moved into our house. There was a place literally like across the street called Judy's Barbecue. And within the first like six or eight months, it went out. They closed. It was just, it was not See, good. Amarillo is only eight and a half for me. That's not bad. Yeah. You? Yeah. So, so about a month ago, I I bought a, a silver 73 series BJ73 85 model, which is basically the first year. Super slick one, low mileage. Bought it in Washington State. Had it shipped to Missouri. It came, it came in. On a Thursday night, I sold it by ten o'clock the next morning. Seriously, and um, so that's is it on this a Friday. One? Uh, no, that's that's the one I bought in Phoenix. <laughs> so, real fast before you start well, telling the story, yep. Yeah, can that's, you give a little quick synopsis? Yeah, Jason, why don't you give yourself some background? Tell tell the audience your like elevator pitch, who you are, how you got to be where you are. Yeah. Uh, basically, right now, I'm the owner of Ozark Overland Outfitters, but it started long. Basically, I was raised in building four-wheel drives. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the best way to describe it. Uh, you know, back whenever I was a kid, my dad always had early Broncos, uh, 66 through 77 Broncos. And so my first vehicle actually was a 74. That's what I drove to school every day. Uh, 74 and- Bronco? 34 Bronco, yeah. Uh, so um, uh, I was in the Broncos up to until, I guess, about 04. Uh, when my daughter was, we, she was fixing to be born. And um, so and also starting my business about the same time. Uh, so we ended up selling it. And um, 
just kind of up in the air about what I wanted to do. Uh, ended up buying a Jeep uh, to replace it, just something cheap, you know. What kind of Jeep? But, what, uh, my, a great, actually, but it's a whole other story. It was unlike any other Wagoneer that you'd see. Uh, end up with ended up with four link in both ends and oh. dual transfer cases and forty two inch tires, and it actually ran as trail leader in Ultimate Adventure in 05. Oh, God. so it was one of those deals that I sell a rig because it's too expensive and I need the money, but when it gets replaced, it gets too much money put in it as well. Oh, uh, but anyways, um, you don't just end up at forty twos. That's yeah, always do. Uh, always do. <laughs> oh Jesus! So I'm looking at it on on my side monitor here. Was it yellow? Uh, no, no. Brown? It was. It was actually. I'm not seeing it there. Did you do it? With, it was one, with no front doors. No front doors. Yeah. Were those H two wheels? That's a different wagon. Oh, that's a different wagon. With me. I didn't. I didn't actually do the entire uh, Ultimate oh. Adventure. I only trail lead for Seymour at the, which was the beginning trail. Uh, and it was it was in that one. But I didn't. Hmm. I didn't fall week, so I didn't get. I wasn't actually. You know, I was more of a, a tour guide for Seymour Off Road Park. Hmm. Uh, but anyways, um, so I had a guy. Uh, bring me an fj40 to build and i built it and i fell on, absolutely fell in love with land cruisers at that point uh so end up selling jeep got a toyota mini truck built it up first and then eventually got a land cruiser but we actually went mini truck several mini trucks while having four runners and then end up with land cruiser been land cruiser ever since nice. so it's been a been a long, you know, many rigs and many hours in the shop. So, but it's, you know, then I, I went to work for Toyota as a kind of a, I don't know, just a more of a learning, learning experience, a different, you know, section of life and worked for them for about three years, then went back full time on her own. So, uh, but stayed up with it pretty much. So, what's in your personal garage at the moment? Uh, right now, uh, I've got my H, my ninety four H Z J seventy three, uh, and I've got my ninety six Troopy, which is behind me. Mm -hmm. I've got a um, uh, pretty much a hundred percent Survivor forty seven C J two A that I'm wow. building now, Tucker. So I got the five to one transfer case already done. I'm building a flange forty four and a thirty, uh, but keeping it on seven fifty sixteen, you know, vintage mm -hmm. tires basically. Uh, Is it a six? Makes, you, look, you didn't go to a, you didn't do like a three fifty or exactly. It's got the L you know L head one thirty four yeah. you know flat four yeah. cylinder in it. Uh, I done a Weber conversion on it. It actually gets down the road really good. Uh, just trying to keep basic the bones stock and and then do just minor upgrades that you know just kind of improve it. It's so clearance gravity on that thing is so low. It's, it's low. very low. It if if Jeep would have you know if if Jeep would have continued on what Willie's had started on how low they set the engine and the drivetrain and the chassis and. It wouldn't have be. It, they're not. They're not hard to roll. They're. they're I mean, they're. They're very, very stable. It's impressive. I've had. You know, I've had. I've been in TJs and JKs and all that. And I mean, it just. This thing feels like a side by side on steep stuff. It sticks. <laughs> I love that. It's refreshing to see somebody who operates in both the Jeep and Land Cruiser world. You know. The off-road scape isn't divided the way sports cars and muscle cars and tuner cars kind of are, you know? Like, if somebody mm -hmm. has a Subaru, like, 
chances are they're going to be diehard super like STI big power big turbo or well, if a some, flat build hat and a vape pin yeah yeah well exactly and if somebody is a challenger like they have you know a, an open exhaust and a warrant out for their arrest um and that's it <laughs> <laughs> but in the off-road world you know people tend to stick to their channel and have an appreciation for other things, but not necessarily dip or delve into the other space. But as far as in our shop, we don't, we won't bring in any other vehicle, but a Toyota. Hmm. Oh, well, that I, is contradictory yeah. to everything I was just saying, but continue. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, well, no, no, no. But, it's a little different because he'll, he's willing to drive an old Jeep. He just doesn't want to work on it. Fair the um, that's fair enough. The deal, the deal with the Willys is this is this is the way this is the way I justify being able to own a forty seven Willys. If it wasn't for the Willys, the Land Cruiser never would have been. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just kind of like I got the oldest Land Cruiser. <laughs> I got um, his and, oldest oldest brother. Yeah. And you know, and what's weird is, is whenever I sat down in it the first time, I've, I've, I've wanted one of these things for years, but I never have been able to find one that was, you know, rust free, completely there, and actually still running after 75 years. And um, I happened onto this oh, one, and whenever I sat down in it and started looking around, I was like, Oh, that's that's land. That's like a mini Land Cruiser part here. This is like this is like a mini Land Cruiser part. Oh, you can see what Toyota had tuck and almost copied, but Toyota just made it so much beefier and, and more durable than what Willys did. So, you know, it's I have a lot of appreciation for it. And that's if, you know, if somebody, I think, a lot, I've grown to love the Willys so much that I think if somebody actually brought me an old Willys, you know, pre-CJ5, Especially, I don't think I'd work on a CJ5. Hmm. Pre CJ5, I think I'd actually work on it because it's 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 really I really just really enjoy it. So, but the Land Cruisers is what you know. It's definitely what's foundation of my heart. So, so uh, anything as a uh, theoretically start to finish Land Cruiser fanatic how do you feel about the about the 250 about the 2020 uh, what are the it's a what 2024 model a year is the start for yeah uh, i think for the u.s market i think it's going to be a home run i really do they're going to the, sell the price point is basically oh, of these things is is basically you know forerunner price point um and it starts at 55 and the Alco interior pro is 54. Like, yeah, yeah. Very, very marginal. So, um, and the fuel economy I think is, is going to, you know, that's one of the big differences between a lot of people buying a land cruiser and not is, mm-hmm. is, you know, back when we got the 200 series, you're looking at 15 mile per gallon best you can do on a good day on stock tire or stock height no armor yeah Yeah. yep so i mean that's the that's the reason why my drive my my wife always drove you know she drives a forerunner instead of a land cruiser is it just gets just a little bit that much better fuel economy and our house is 80 uh, 80 mile round trip from our shop so you know it's holy crap that's house a lot of so, miles. You can't live in your shop close to your house, your house closer to your shop. I know that's we, a, live, that's we, live, we built, we live in the middle of we built a cabin here back about four years ago up on the north prong of the Jacks Fort, uh, away from everybody and we love it. And it just a freight truck couldn't we get freight trucks every day at the shop and a freight truck could not get to my property. No. So God <laughs> you need like not to disparage the, you know, the four by four credibility. 
you get like a Rav4 Prime or a fucking all wheel drive new <laughs> Prius, you know, just to like bring the fuel cost down. That's a, yeah. that's a haul. I used to do 110 miles round trip every day, so I get it. But yep, in four, yep, definitely. That's not nothing. It's um, yeah, I just in the winter time, especially to get out of that river, you know, river bottom. It's just you know, you need four wheel drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've tried. We've tried. My wife drove a Prius for a while, and you know, she first winter she was stuck at the house for a week because she comes in later than I do. And so she didn't want to ride with me and I made it to work in the land cruiser. She was stuck in the house. She said, forget this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's pre Starlink internet too. So she's really stuck at the house. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We got Starlink now down there. So yeah. Like that kind of being backed into the corner and that kind of thing is kind of nice. Usually where you're like forced to, yeah, cut everything off, but that's a different yep. conversation. So, so uh, Ross, right before we started recording, he started talking about the kind of mileage he sees with that troopy behind him, mm. and it made my head explode a little bit. Diesel, yeah, yeah, one HD FT 24 valve, which is uh, uh what 2.2.8? No, it's 4.2. Oh, 4.2. Jesus, um, yep, yeah, it's in line six. <sighs> What is uh, it? Two- turbo and then I intercooled it. Uh, I gotta look. What a two point. So, okay. Yep. That's that's a that's a eighty series uh, that we just did a diesel swap on. That's the same engine that's in my Troopy. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one's in Carlsbad, New Mexico. Nice. Uh, so you- we swapped. We actually done a five speed swap in that cruiser as well. Oh wow. And it's got a it's got a front mount intercooler on that. What so? What gear ratio are you running? A four ten, it's factory four ten. Oh, fact, okay, so and it, you don't need DEF, you don't need any of that stuff. No, no, one wire and it runs. Brake pump. Hard. A, what are you getting? Uh, twenty miles per gallon. Uh, if I if it between sixty and sixty five. On a normal pump diesel. Yep. Yeah. Mm. With, With a two hundred eighty five Yeah. And that's a fifty gallon eight, tank, Ross. Oh fuck, 50, really? Yeah. yeah. So we get right a thousand miles of range. Holy shit. <laughs> Is that a long range tank? Like who makes that tank? Is it long range America? Uh, it's a Toyota tank. It's um oh it's two tanks, two twenty five gallon tanks. What a different world. Right? That's like my head exploded. Like the Suburban I saw 680 the other day, but that's like a 5.3 that's killing half the cylinders. 5.3 on a 32 gallon. Yeah, my dad. Yeah. My dad had a 57 gallon Titan tank in his his old Duramax pickup. And if he got, you know, like 18 to 20 on a good day, like that's still, that's fucking crazy. Right, that's yeah. great mileage. That's great mileage. I'm I'm hearing the troopy argument better and better and better. It'll put all four kids in the back. Come on, there are almost it's no third. arguments against Six passenger. What would you say, Jason? If if you keep all the seats in it, it's thirteen passenger. Thirteen. I only there you six. go, Chris. <laughs> all family plus their friends. Which does happen. So, yeah. <laughs> Jason, what if you have, you know, given your profession and, and proclivities, what's your dream build since you already got a fucking diesel troopy? It's behind him. <laughs> that's, it? that's it. Oh, man. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's pretty. Just finish it up. It's the easiest way I've ever heard that question answered on the show is someone just pointing behind them. Yeah, usually <laughs> there's like a five count and like a yeah. soul searching. Okay, that's awesome. What a... I said like years and years and years ago that the only way that I would sell my 80 series, which was literally built as pretty much as far as you could build an 80 series, um, 
and it worked phenomenal. And there's a lot of things it would do that the Troopy just can't do. Mm -hmm. Just not, you know, as far as off-road stuff. Yeah. Um, but I said the only way I would sell it is if I was able to buy a Troopy. And um, bought the Troopy, so I ended up I ended up selling the 80. And, of course, waited 10 months to get the Troopy over the ocean. Um, <laughs> ended up buying the 80 Series back. And then whenever the Troopy, uh, it was it was actually already landed, uh, just waiting for go through, and I sold the eighty series again. <laughs> so and then went through some um, seller's remorse. Always oh, for a little. Uh, Dude, is it just um, you know the Troopy? It it needed quite a bit. Uh, and um, it is, you know, it was quite a bit, quite a bit more utilitarian than what I was used to. So, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm getting it turned around and the man, the power increase that I've got over the 80 series, especially in the mountains, it's, it's unbelievable. Yep. I've never, I've never been able to pass cars going over Monarch Pass in Colorado, you know, gaining it all the way over it in fourth gear you're giving you know, and they, ptsd it, yeah I, I don't struggle in the mountains i'm okay you're you're 80 did i didn't go to the mountains that often so so the suburban's normally what's out there <laughs> all right jason so first of all looking at at the troopy are those pizza cutters are those 33s yeah they're they're basically what I would consider the 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 upper end, the upper end of pizza cutters. Two fifty five wide. Two fifty five. So, yeah, two hundred fifty five millimeter wide. Eighty five. Five sixteen. Six. Yeah. That's what I so had. 30. I had that on my fourth gen four runner. It yep. was yep. great. Great size my tire. My favorite size tire I've ever run. Yeah. I've run a. To probably triple what most people have ever run in their life. Um, it's you know they they really oh impressed me. They um, I still the trails that we we have around here local. Uh, you know I wish they were thirty five inch tall. Um, and once these wear out, I may go some taller, but I don't know if I'll go any wider. But I still have every once in a while. What's that? Uh, what are they? Are they are Falcons. Falcon MTs? Yep, MTs. Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, every few days I have the desire to put three fifteens on it. No, don't do that. Oh, uh, <laughs> you'll you'll make your vehicle slower, worse yep. to respond to cornering, and you'll get oh yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Don't do that. But it's um, you know, it's just. I get in, I get into some deep ruts and stuff, and I, you know, I wish I had bigger than I get through. Like I went to Colorado a couple weeks ago, and we, man, we ran Poughkeepsie, we ran Mineral Creek. That was my next uh, question. What kind of adventure are you taking there. this thing on? Yeah, I mean, we haven't, um, we've only took really two big adventures with it so far. Uh, but you know, it out there, I mean, it does great. It does wonderful. Uh, so. And, and the drive, the drive and the and the stability is so much better than the wide tires. Mm -hmm. Can confirm. So, so the first um, the first trip we took it on, uh, we took a trip up into Canada. Uh, went to um, we was actually going to make a big loop into Canada, and the weather just deteriorated. So we went to Niagara Falls, then we cut across through New York, uh, Vermont. Uh, up into Maine, went to um, Where in Maine Acadia. You know? Acadia, yeah. Okay. Uh, so more we done some off road, but it was mostly just you know a sightseeing trip, family trip. Yeah, that's my just territory. Kind of, that's northeast. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful over there. What time of I'm year ready. was this? What's that? What time of year was this trip? Uh, I think it was about probably two or three months ago. Okay. Yeah, that's 
That's good. So That's good. Wasn't wasn't too um, wasn't too long ago. Yep. Uh, and then um, then we just got through making a trip to um, there. That's the trip. You can probably see a date on there somewhere. It says about three months ago. Yeah, about thirteen weeks. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good t- good time to be up there. Oh. Uh, so the Colorado trip it was great. We did um. We did um. Uh, Started in southern Colorado, come out of New Mexico, followed the Rio Grande, basically all the way to the headwaters. Oh wow! Uh, so um, that's I, I'm kind of halfway obsessed with Rio Grande. I love it. I've been I, I've been uh, following it through New Mexico on uh, several trips and got it pretty much New Mexico taken care of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done a lot of it in Texas, uh, and then I wanted to do Colorado. I've Crossed it many times in Colorado, but as far as just trying to follow it, uh, I haven't. And man, it was it was a great trip. Uh, so it was just me and my wife on that trip, and um, just a week long. Mm-hmm. But that that was the gist of it. Was just basically just following the Rio Grande. Uh, I actually on Instagram somewhere I think there's a picture of the headwaters. There's like a wood uh, stick somebody carved in. Headwaters the Rio Grande River is only about this wide, mm-hmm. so <laughs> crazy, fucking crazy. They're like eleven thousand feet. Holy crap! So eleven thousand feet. Sorry, I was but, searching stuff. So. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Regret, I, I, there was a little bit of a time there that I regretted buying the Troopy. But as I use it, and as I modify it, and get it, you know, a little bit more off-road capable, which you know, when does that stop? Never. Uh, it never. <laughs> for me, it does. Yeah, we're building. We're building a forty over here in front of my troopy over there. We're building a forty for a customer up in Maryland. We've got a one FZ. I have an eighty in it. Oh man. H five five speed. We've got eighty series axles. Doing coilovers all the way around. Dude, turn the camera. Yeah. Us on video want to see this shit. Oh, yeah, okay. that's well, awesome. Let me stop sharing again. Oh <laughs> it's my. like he had it on. It's yeah. You're not kidding. You're that's like that's not yeah. some you know random project that a that a local no, like a, a it, friend it, of a friend is building. You're that's like a teardown. Yeah, it's totally custom. That's what I. That's what we did for years. Just, a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, up until a few years ago where we started getting away from building absolutely every single piece and buying a lot of stuff just because our work volume got so big that we, we just can't build everything. Mm-hmm. But since I was a kid, I mean, we, we specialized in building, you know, high end vehicles with, you know, high quality fabrication yep. and, and, you know, doing, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, uh, but you know, as as my shop has grown and I've I've um, hired some, some more really really good skilled help, uh, we're starting to get more back into my roots on that, which I'm really happy with. So, two questions following the build aspect of your of your profession and shop. Um, first of all. Have you had any requests that you've had to say no to? And then oh, yeah. have you had requests for non land cruisers to do? And if so, yeah, what yeah. They? we get on a basis, we get people calling us wanting us to build Jeeps. And, um, would you, or would you, look at rent. How, how deep into the Jeep world would it have to go for you to actually take that on? Uh, as of right now, nothing. <laughs> you wouldn't if somebody commissioned you to say, "I got an LJ with a, a an LS six, and I want to do Dana sixties or like full widths or something." Not I did that for. That's. I'm tired of doing. It. <laughs> fair tired. enough. That's so fair not. Enough. It's not a dollar amount. It's just I don't want to do that it's anymore. Fair. Like yeah. I, I respect I was, that. Fuck that brand and, was, and, that, and that platform. In 06, I had a good customer bring me a, a brand new LJ. Mm-hmm. Uh, we 
he brought it in. We took um, the frame out from under it, other than the center suction, to be able to maintain the, the VIN number. Uh, we built a complete tube chromoly chassis from one end, you know, out each end, uh, all tied into the all into the roll cage and everything through the floor. Done 60 and a 14 bolt. Uh, we first when we first built it, it still he wanted to keep the um, four liters. So we did. Oh Jesus! Uh, but it ended up going to an LS3 uh, in it. Yeah. And it was 47 inch LTBs. It was all coilovers all the way around and everything, but man, I don't know how many Jeeps we done LS swaps and tons and four links. And that was that was like a normal thing, just like you see the Land Cruisers around here. That was the normal thing, and you know, in Harris Custom Off Road mm -hmm. for years. Um, but it just we we got so busy, and man, the Land Cruiser crowd is the best people. Now, I don't mean that's defensive. Anybody that owns a Jeep, but the Land Cruiser crowd is some of the best people in the world to work for. Yeah. Uh, they, um, they're just genuine people. You get done with the project, they always pay. Mm -hmm. and, and they always <laughs> more work. And I just, you know, it's my goal. My goal in every project is not just to make a paycheck. It's to make a friend. Mm -hmm. and, and, I've, and I've done that. For years and years so pretty much every state if i have a problem on a trip i've got a friend there and um they're always willing to help mm -hmm. so it's um it's just wonderful it's a blessing that's awesome. not, i'm seeing i'm now mapping out how far away from you i am yes seriously it's about um it's about four and a half hours yeah i think i can get in under that yep i just <laughs> um I don't know if you know Jeff Belt up in Kansas City. I just finished up a diesel swap in his um on his forty series. Sounds familiar. He's got a um he's got a two hundred series that I've done quite a bit of work to. It's got the Camp Tech pop top on it. Oh. So Ron the two hundred is his Instagram. Say that again. Big Ron the two hundred. Not to be confused with uh, with uh, Land Rover Ron, who we just had on the show. Nope. <laughs> well, Another buddy. Yeah, different yeah. land. Dot dot dot. All right. So, so the '60s and the '62s are you know the holy grail for the family haulers in the Land Cruiser world, but the '40s for the like I grew up. And the reason that I'm in the off road world is my dad's YJ Wrangler. You know. So mm -hmm. I go back past that, and it's like, oh, CJs are cool, blah, 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 and scramblers are cool. Um, but, you know, given my Toyota 4x4 proclivities, it goes back to FJ40s. So if somebody were to go in with a, a reasonably low budget and a desire to get something they could work on for a long time and ultimately have a reasonably capable crawler out of what would you say were the the main things to look for? Because most of these things are just beat to shit at this point. Yeah. You, you talking about just in Twitter in general or just Land Cruiser? Uh, like an FJ 40, like something, yep. something for the trail to have fun with on the weekend. You know, it's, I don't, I don't view the, the 40 as a, as anybody's budget vehicle, you know, really mm -hmm. a 40 it's old enough that it needs, it needs a pretty much a full rebuild. Um, and there's honestly an 80 series is probably more capable right out of the box than a 40 series is. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Take. Okay. Those. I see that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's Jeff's 200 and his 40. <clears throat> that was the weekend he picked it up. <laughs> that is that. Say that lattice part again. That's a sweet forty. It's all factory paint. Hmm. Got a beautiful patina. It's a sweet two hundred too. Yeah, definitely is. Yeah, his, his setup on the two hundred is intense. Yep. 
And I just said intense, and I'm about to show you a photo of it being uh huh, being a tent. Tense. Yep. Well, he's, <laughs> he's got this pop top up top, but then they've got this Amazon tailgate tent for the back of it, so they could sleep three in the back instead of just two. That's like the yep. Aztec and Avalanche. It is exactly like the Pontiac Aztec on the back of it. <laughs> the Avalanche have the uh, the tent escapade that went off the back. Yeah. You know, the pop tops, I've had rooftop tents for years, but man, the pop tops are such a, I don't, I, I hate to say the word game changer, but it really is. Whenever you can push the floor up and be able to walk around in the back and, and, um, yeah, it just, it just makes it so nice. And it's even faster to, to, you know, put up and, and take off than, yeah. than what the, you know, the hard shell rooftop tents are. Mm-hmm. How uh, how tall are you, Jason? I'm five eleven. Five eleven. Okay, so decent size. You know, what Ross and I refer to as normal height. I'm I'm a little short of six four, and so that's why I always. You guys you, are more you could, In the troopy, you could still stretch out and not touch. Okay. I think. As long as you're long not as I'm far enough back. Yeah, it's a long old top. Yeah, okay. it's. Oh. Uh, yeah, and, um, yeah. I think, I think you would have no problem. I mean, you know how I don't know if you're familiar with how it works, but it's got a small section that pops up at the back, and then you can enter in to the sleeping area, and then you fold up this. I can I can actually lay in the long section with this still popped up. Oh really? Okay. Feet. Yeah, and it's nice. another. You know, it's another probably. You know, two foot. So can I ask where where in New York this camp was that you're showing pictures of? That Chris is showing pictures of? Yeah. Uh, it's um basically basically somewhere in the National Forest due south of, south of Lake Erie. Oh hmm. okay. So it'd be on the western side of New York. Uh, just just here. I grew up in New York and yeah, make most of my associations with New York, so I figured it that, out. That means it's super close, right, Ross? Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> Lake Lake Erie, <laughs> Westchester, and Buffalo, are right next to each other. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I have no desire to associate with Buffalo area in any way. So I'm one of those guys that somebody will ask, "Where where is that at?" And how do I get there? And I tell them, I could take you there, but <laughs> you got to get there. Yep. <laughs> Dude, one of the places that we ride our ATVs is like a private club in the New York, you know, up by Albany in New York. And it's, it's just like a couple hundred acres and they have it divided into section sectors or sections or something and my brother and my dad know every single section by the trail by the markers and just like it's just doesn't make any sense section nine. so what you're saying is if those two are incapacitated you're lost <laughs> there are extraction points oh okay <laughs> <laughs> I like my joke better, but yeah, I'm glad you will survive. If <laughs> I'm capacitated, then we. I'm not actually going to refrain from saying the thing I was going to say. Okay. I'll, <laughs> Chris, I'll text you. It doesn't have anything to do with the current trial. Anyways, okay. moving on. Um, <laughs> Back to the back to the Jeep thing. I did do I did do a really cool gladiator back about oh. probably two years ago. My I don't know if y'all oh. Brad Latrell from Arkansas. I don't know if you know him or not. No. He's in sports car stuff real big too, but but sounds familiar. Yeah, he he, he had some Lamborghinis and 
Always ran Express Rally. I don't know if you're familiar with Express Rally. Oh, well, that's how we found you, is I talked to Scott. Hi, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah so, there we go. One plus one equals two there. Is uh, uh, one of mine and Scott's good friends. Okay. But he, he calls me one day and, and says, um, hey, I want I want like a – I went on, you know, been a, several Express Rallies uh, together, and he was like, I want to I want to build my I want to build my gladiator. He said, um, I want to do it because I want to say that I I had you build me a jeep. <laughs> and, um, so he's like, I want to do like alley cab canopy camper, mm-hmm. uh, all electrical, all I mean everything. So I was like, okay, yeah. Brad Brad's asking me to build something. I feel like that's like I've got to build it. Mm-hmm. Brad's such a good guy. If you ever met him and was around him, you like Brad wants something. It's like an honor that he's asking you because he can ask anybody to do it. He's got the money. Is it yeah. white? So he can point his money. It's white. Anywhere. It's white. It's got some graphics on it. So what do you start with the platform as? What trim, Gladiator, and, and what power? It was. Train? It was. Um, There's only two. It was basic two power trains with Gladiator. There's the. Panastar and yeah. Eco Diesel. Yeah, the, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't mess with it. Wasn't the diesel? It's, it's just a six cylinder. Um, and um, but the, yeah, that's it. Um, he, um, he brought it to me. He already had the suspension done. He'd been on several express rallies. He actually had changed the, the tank configuration several times. Never could find nothing that he was happy with. Um, and every time we would, we'd get together, he'd be like looking at, you know, the tent that I had on my, on my, um, <laughs> and the awning and all that stuff and the rear set up. And he was like, man, uh, I just, you know, I want something like that. I said, well, what you need is a canopy camper. And so I showed him a picture one, one evening and it was like, dude, that's, that's it. And it was a few months later, he called me and we, we got that done all the red arc, red vision, uh, mm-hmm. with like 200 amp hours of lithium and and um, it's a neat setup but I enjoyed that project uh, it was different and, and um, he's he's enjoyed it as well so looking forward I haven't uh, told him when, when the trip he got here and I got it all done we'd take a trip together we haven't done that yet but well, it's, you're, you're not done with the trooper yet though so you said you're still troop- touching it up anything ever done yeah yeah it's still the interior fit out i want to go with some showman seats in it Ooh, uh, fancy finish 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 sound dead in the interior and and then do the final the final edition of the of the rear fit out mm-hmm. threw something together for the for the northeast trip uh, just to basically see what i didn't like okay uh mm-hmm. first troopy and uh, so I've I've got that figured out. So we're fixing the we're fixing to do that. I got a cabinet maker down in Memphis that's that's really really good. And he's done several, uh, you, you know, automotive style van uh, fit outs. Uh, so we're going to take that and um, make it make it happen. So how much do you think uh, that thing weighs right now? Very curious. Uh, haven't weighed it yet. Uh, I've been meaning to run it by the scales. I got some scales just a few miles down the road. Yeah, find a truck scale, throw it on. It's heavy. It, it's heavy. it's heavy. Yeah, you can you can feel it. Yeah. Whenever you know it really does it does really well off road. Uh, but when you're climb when you're climbing stuff steep, you can you can really feel the way. Mm-hmm. But it still climbs it. It's amazing. It it, it impresses me like to no end what it'll do it's just getting used to it you know it because it feels so much different than the 80 so where did your troopy come from did it come from the middle east or australia it was an australian market okay Australia. Uh, but it 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 was bought it was bought in dubai uh and that's where i found it was in dubai okay so it already had the alu cab on it you didn't have to put that on I had it put on when it was in Dubai. Oh, okay. I was yeah. able to 
I was able to um, uh, buy basically buy the IU cab installed uh, for what the IU cab would have cost me uh, here in the states, and then I would have had to have put it on. So it was one of those things that that it was just it made sense, and there was an IU cab dealer over there that installed it for me. Dude, it's so, awesome. You go through like a broker, or was this just like? Yeah, I went through Land Cruiser Heaven. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Frank, Frank, um, uh, he, um, he took it over to the, to the IU cab dealer and had that done for me. Chris, uh, we got to get them on the show. That's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll make a note. Yeah. <laughs> Jason will, Jason will hook us up. Yeah. Yeah. Frank's a good guy. He's, he's treating me well. Uh, rear bumper, uh, that was on the troopy. It, it literally, the end of it broke off, uh, somewhere in new york oh no and um i had um (laughs) um, i actually had um uh put a post up on the internet that i needed a factory door carrier uh, for the tire and a guy up in um up in maine had one so we had to carry the spare tire inside uh in the back with my daughter which really made me nervous. Mm-hmm. Wasn't a really good, safe way to tie it down. How old was she at the time? What's that? How old was she at the time? Oh, she's um, she's seventeen. Okay, well, she's, I, she's so. big enough to be aware of something starting to go wrong with the tire. Yeah, but the tire at the same time, you still don't around. want it around. Yeah. Them. If you get yeah. eighty pounds of wheel and tire, like coming through the cabin, no matter no matter how old they get, they're still your baby girl. So <laughs> exactly. Okay, hey, mine's mine's. 16, 15, 16 months. So the good yeah. news is you didn't know it accurately right off the top of your head. You, you stumbled over it. That's the good news. a year. <laughs> yeah. That was the day. That was actually the day I picked it up in, in, um, in Maryland. That's so good. Oh, it had God. some, had some real long ghetto shackles on it. So that it was like no caster. Oh, uh, we drove it. My buddy, uh, Nick Atwell in Mount Airy, which is about an hour from Frank's shop. Uh, I drove it over to his shop. We spent like seven hours doing all kinds of odds and ends stuff. The the left side front tire, when you turn, would actually hit the exhaust. Like oh, God. The board, fun. As in like no burning rubber. Uh, so I went to the, if you watch my video of the pickup on my YouTube channel, uh, we went to the auto parts like two or three times. Uh, I got like a, several bins and stuff, and we fabbed up the front section of the exhaust and and got it where the tire wouldn't rub it. So and then we drove a thousand miles home. So uh, I don't I don't so know that there is a better pitch for importing something or just. Toyota and gen- Land Cruisers in general to say, I bought this and then drove it a thousand miles. Yes. <laughs> well, you hear, you hear so many horror stories. There, there is so many horror stories of that. Right. Um, even though there was some problems, uh, they were, they were really, as far as like the axles, I didn't, you know, I knew that they were the original axles mm-hmm. that somebody beat on for years in Australia. Uh, I, I didn't expect them to be, uh, not needing to be rebuilt. Um, and, um, but you know, I didn't have any problems other than the rear pinion seal, like totally left the chat on the way home. And I was having to put oil in the rear diff, you know, every hundred miles. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but you know, overall, I mean, like, like Chris said, you know, to be able to import something and drive a thousand miles home, yeah. I work on it a week and then we take it and do a 4,000 mile mm-hmm. trip up in the Northeast. And to have the community backing you to, yeah. you know, pick up you stuff know, it's, along the way. It's, it's really, honestly, it's not, um, it, there was very few things that was wrong with it. I, and I can, um, I've, I, I don't have, I don't have any, any negatives to say about the experience of importing it through, Frank Lankers are having mm. it all. It's he's treated me well. 
few things that that I needed, you know, that he really didn't even have to. He, he, he needed to charge me for, but he just sent me. Yep. So it's um he's hey. he's he's a great. There's a reason yeah, think... that we kind of only somewhat joke, but but joke that we're the unofficial Land Cruiser podcast, the same way that we joke we're the unofficial Rebel Rally podcast. You know, like there's. Merit and substantiation behind all of it, and it's not just—it's not just mechanical and and that kind of merit. It's it's the personal, you know, stuff that right. that follows it. Yep, that's where it's really at. Well, sweet, we have done our hour, Jason. Thank you so much for joining yep. us. Yep. I'm going to wrap up yep. the show real fast. Uh, you can rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, Jason is at Overland Outfitters, and his website is – oh, my God. I said Overland Outfitters. It's Ozark Overland Ozark. Outfitters Ozark. is the Instagram, and it's OzarkOverlandOutfitters.com. Um, you can get on there and see all the trucks that Jason finds. Uh, there's lots of 70 Series stuff that's on there. Um, yeah. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends. And I'm overlanding dad and we did a show. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, cool. Thanks, yep. Jason. Thank you.